Hey, crafty friend, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. I'm excited to be back again sharing a really fun shaker card that I made and I filled it with coffee beans. It features images from a brand new stamp company called The Rabbit Hole Designs. They're now officially open today and we're celebrating with a blog hop. I've got links below. Make sure you check them out because I'm going to be giving away some fun prizes. I'm going to start my card by cutting out several frames. I used uh, white and brown speckled cardstock. I just thought it'd be more interesting than plain cardstock. I'm going to make sure to save those white cutouts when I cut them. And then I made a card base for more of that brown. And I also cut the frame out two more times from chipboard. I plan to stack them all together and use the white pieces as wallpaper for three of those boxes. And then I'm going to use one of those frames to trace out the inner opening of that fourth box so I can cut it out. I don't have a rectangle die that's the right size, so I'm just going to cut it out real quick with a ruler and a craft knife. Obviously this is going to be my window, um, but I wanted to peek all the way through to the inside of my card. Plus it's going to create a little pocket and the coffee beans are kind of thick, so this is going to give them a little more room. Side note, I plan to hand deliver this card. <laughs> I think it would get crushed in the mail. I'm going to reinforce that crease and then I'll make sure that everything lines up when I stack it all together. And so far so good. And then look how fun, I've got a window. Now remember that first white piece that I cut? The frame was kind of an extra, I really just needed the inside pieces. So I thought I could use part of it to decorate the back of my window. I'm going to trim it to fit in place. But then when I line it up, I realize that it's too close to the fold and I needed to trim a little bit off the edge here. So the top layer of my card is going to be that brown frame and I decided to add some of the, uh, some shading, a little bit of blending with Vintage Photo Distress Oxide ink. And then next I'm going to line up my white blocks and I'll stamp a background with that caffeine molecule. Isn't that a fun stamp? So cute. I'm just stamping it down randomly and I'm making sure to stamp off the edges. That way it looks like I cut it down from like a big piece of pattern paper or something. And then when I get it all stamped, I'm going to come back in with a little of that vintage photo around the edges here too. <laughs> and while I've got that brown ink out, I'm going to go ahead and stamp my envelope. I kind of have a rule about not sending them out naked. But remember with envelopes, you don't want to give the whole card away. You just want to give a little hint of what's going to be inside. So I guess that's really just a scantily clad envelope. <laughs> um, I've got a scrap of plain white cardstock and I'm going to start laying out my stamps here. I have a speech bubble die that fits perfectly around the sentiment and I thought it would be a cute way to incorporate it into the card, but I didn't want it to be plain white. So I'm going to loosely trace around the die and then I'll use um, some Copic markers and reds, a few shades of reds, to add some color. I could have just stamped it first, but I want to emboss the sentiment, and it's just easier if I add the color down. Plus with words, you really don't want to accidentally smear any of the ink. So I'm going to get my stamps in place and pick them up with the lid of my positioner. Then I'll ink them with Memento Tuxedo Black. It's Copic safe, and I'm going to be coloring that cat with Copics in a second here. So I'm going to clean my stamp, and I can put the cat away. And then I'm going to prep the sentiment area with an anti-static powder tool. I'll stamp it again with Versamark ink, and then I can sprinkle my embossing powder on top and it'll stick. Then I'm going to melt it with a heat gun, and that gives me a nice raised finish. And then I decided to trim these two apart right here before I run the sentiment through my Big Shot. I won't accidentally mar the paper that way. Um, my plates are getting older, and my top plate, even though I never use it as a cutting plate, has some dents in it, and I just didn't want that to transfer to the paper. So now I'm going to color. If you're not interested in this part, go ahead and skip ahead to 5 minutes and 19 seconds, but I'm just going to give you a quick time lapse here. And did you see that little mouse? She's so cute. I colored it in gray, and then I'm going to use 3 or 4 shades of orange to color the cat's fur. I want to make sure I'm creating a lot of dimension with highlights and shading. 
I'm not trying to get a smooth blend here. I really want lots of texture. And then I used some cool grays for her eyes and then BGs for her robe and her slippers. And I came back in with those same reds that I used on the sentiment strip for the mug. And then of course I can't forget the brown coffee. Once I get her all colored in, I'm going to cut her out with my scan and cut. I love this machine. It's a huge time saver. Plus my thumbs never go numb anymore when I'm fussy cutting and that is important. So there's a little bit of negative space that didn't get cut out. I'm going to use a light brown marker to color over it and then when I put it on my card it'll just disappear. After I've got that done, I'm going to double check that everything lines up and looks good before I start gluing it together. I'll test the placement of everything. And then once I'm satisfied, I want to start building from the bottom up. So I'm going to start with that um, inside frame. And I'm using PVA glue in a fine line bottle. This gives me good control and it dries quickly, but I do have a little wiggle room if I need it. I've got a couple pieces of tool that I'm going to use to hold the coffee beans in. I glue the first layer to the front of my card and you can see it's a little tricky. I'm going to fuss with it for a second because it's stretchy and there just isn't that much material. Then I figured out it would work better if I just use the tip of the bottle to apply glue on top of the mesh and just let it seep through underneath to the paper. And then I can sandwich it down with my first layer of chipboard. And after I get this in place, I'll take those white boxes and I'm going to glue them into their spots. I've got a bone folder here and I'm using it to go around the edges to make sure that the, the little white boxes get flush to the cart. The edges can sometimes stick up a bit. The next layer is the other chipboard frame. Combined, these two are actually pretty thick and they're going to make a nice deep well for the coffee beans. And then I decided to glue the other layer of tool to the back of that brown frame. This way it could lay nice and flat instead of puckering up over those coffee beans. And you can see that it went much faster this time by applying the glue on top. I decided that the vintage photo ink wasn't really dark enough. And rather than trying to mask it all off and sponge more color, I was just going to use a darker marker to add it. I'm really not being precise or careful here either. And then I'm going to put a double layer of foam behind my cat. I want her to stick up. So I'll peel off the release paper and get her into place. And I don't want the cinnamon to, to stick up as high as the cat. So I'm only going to put a single layer of foam underneath the part that's going to be over the white box. And I'll add some glue to the areas that can, that'll rest on the frame. I used a brown marker to go around the outside edges of the card just to even out the color. And then I'm going to finish up with some shimmer pen on her eyelids and the coffee mug and a thin layer of glossy accents over the mug. And then that's it folks. It's all done. Don't you just love her? I think she's hilarious. This stamp set is called Over Caffeinated Cat and she's available now. Remember to head over to therabbitholedesigns.com and it's therabbitholedesigns.com to see the whole new line and then get in on some of that prize action. I've also got links on my blog. And if you like today's video, please subscribe and click the bell and be sure to come back tomorrow for my next card. Thanks for watching.